So now that we have sort of like a database of writers here, let's actually go back to the app component. What I'm gonna do is let's create component dead mount here. Inside of that method, I'd like to fetch all the writers so that we can actually set them on the state. So what I'll use here is the new fetch API and I'm going to go to HTTP localhost 1004 and then I will basically go to writers. So once that finishes, I will call the then callback, we'll get a response. And then what typically happens here is when you get a response, you'd like to convert it to JSON. So the first thing you might do is you might return response JSON like that. And then finally, as the second callback, once you do get that response, it will contain the list of writers. And once you get those writers, you can finally call this set state with the writers like that, okay? And I'll add a few spaces there for clarity. And the only thing is we need to remove the S because we are using HTTP and not HTTPS. So let me save that. And if you go back to the terminal, the one thing we could do here, of course, is we've got the server running, so we can just simply start out our application. So I'll do yarn start. This will start the application. And the app will be running in the browser, so hopefully everything is fine. Let's see if it made the request as we expected. So we made a get to writers, and we got the list of writers as we expected. Now, it would also be nice if we could actually just do yarn start, and this would start the front end application as well as the fake um, JSON server that we install. So the one thing that we could do is if we go back to package JSON over here, we do have the start command. What we could actually do is we could actually add another command here. And if you're using a Unix like system, you could use the ampersand symbol and then include another command. So what we can do here is we can actually call the JSON server itself with the watch flag. And this would point to store JSON. And then finally, the port needs to be 3004. Otherwise, it's basically not going to run because the front end application also runs on port 3000. So we need to provide a custom port for that. And then also note that we don't have to provide the node modules thing with the bin folder because that path is already being resolved in package JSON for us. So let's save that and let's go back to the terminal. I'm gonna stop everything else here and let's stop the server as well. So I'm gonna clear the log and I'll just simply do yarn start. So this should start the server and this should also start the front end application. And if we close that, let's open up the DevTools and let's refresh. And as you can see here, it makes a request to writers and the request succeeds. So everything is running fine. Now we've got the front end as well as the back end running at the same time. Now back in AppJS here, this is one of the typical forms of using the fetch API that you would see. But instead of doing that, I'd like to actually use the new async await syntax. So what I'll do is I'll create a constant of writers and then we'll make the fetch request to the writers, but then we'll basically await for it until it finishes. And then once that's done, so I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. And once that's done, I'm actually going to call the JSON method on it. And of course, we need to await as well because all of those operations are asynchronous. And in fact, let's actually do console log writers to see if that actually works back in the app. As you're going to see here, we get an error. And that's because we need to add another keyword that's known as async to component did mount. And that's actually going to make this function work with the async await syntax that's been added, I believe, in ES8. It's kind of hard to keep up. But let's save the file and let's go back. And as you can see here, everything works. So finally, what I'll do is I'm also going to set the state. So let's do this set state. And we'll just basically pass the writers on it like that. So once we do have the writers in our application state, what I'd like to do next is I'd like to create an order list. Let's have a few list items here. And then here is basically where I would like to add the links. So let's actually import uh, browser router here from React router DOM, like that. And once we have that browser router, this is basically the component that needs to be used as the wrapping element for the entire application. So before we actually have any JSX or any um, JSX markup, we need to wrap everything in browser router in order to enable writing in our application. So that's the first step we need to do. I'll bring back the div as we had before. But now everything is wrapped in this router and if you save and if you go back, basically nothing changed. It's going to behave just like before. You're not gonna see any changes. But once we do that, this is the point where we can actually define the links. 
Now, of course, you could default to anchor tags. The only problem with that is that once you create those anchor tags, and let's actually create a few here, let's say writers. So this will be the link to our writers. And let's just say writers, and let's say that. The only problem with that setup, once you click on that link, as you can see here, the application is going to refresh. The issue with that is that we're actually creating a single page application or SBA. With single page applications, there's basically no refreshes. And what typically happens when you click a link is the URL itself changes, but then parts of the application will be re-rendered based on what route has actually been matched by the application. So the whole routing system is being managed on the front end instead of the back end, and that's why you don't see the page refresh as you would typically see in multi-page applications. Because in those applications, what typically happens is you ask for a page from the server, and the server returns back all of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for that page, and then you have a full refresh. The page refreshes and then you see the contents of this page. But like I said, we're building a single page application here and that's why there's gonna be no page refreshes. And for that exact reason, there's actually a specialized component that's known as link. And the link will basically allow us to have the anchor tag, as you might expect. And the link needs a few parameters here. So the first one will be a prop, it's on S2. This will basically be the path. So let's just simply do slash, we might call it home. So this will be the route to home. And then let's also create another link. And this link will be pointing it to the writers. So I'll do slash writers like that. And let's indent it a little bit. And let's go back to the browser. Now we have two links. So one of them points to home, one of them to writers. Now notice that once I click on those links, we don't get any page refresh. And that's exactly what I was talking about. The link component, what it basically does is it creates a an anchor element, if you inspect it, you're actually going to see it right there with the href tag. But then when you actually click on the link, it's going to prevent the default behavior and then also update the URL. Once we do have the links, it would be nice to actually display different content based on what link has been matched. So first of all, instead of having a div here, I'm going to switch to a fragment because that's what I like to use. We don't actually need any divs. And uh, for the fragment, of course, we need to import it as well from React. And then inside of that fragment, what I'd like to do is to have several sections. So one could be a section for home and the other section would be for the writers. So I'd like to see different sections based on the different URL that we're currently on. So for example, this could be wrapped in a div, right? And inside of that div, we just simply have our home, okay, like that. And then we have another div just below it where we put our writers and then we can delete all those other lines and then we did that. So these sections, I want them to be displayed conditionally based on the route that we are currently on. What React Router allows us to do at this point is to import a component that's known as route. And then the route component will allow us to create definitions for the routes in our application. So we'll just have a simple route here and the path is going to be the home path. So just simply slash. And we'll create another one that's going to match the writers. So I'll just put slash writers. And then to instruct the route to display something whenever that route is matched, so the slash route, what we need to do is we need to provide one of the two properties. There's actually three, but the two that are most commonly used are render as well as component. Now with render, it's basically a property that will expect a function, okay? So we can provide a function like that. And for that function, we can just simply paste the markup that we had. So for instance, a div with the text of home. We'll do the same thing for the second route. So we'll do render. This will be a function again. And we'll put a function like that. And let's bring back the div inside of it. So this will match the writers. And this is what we expect to be displayed whenever we match that route, basically. Let's we'll just add a space and then we'll all those lines like that. So if we save it, now let's go back to the browser. When you land on the home page, you're gonna see home being displayed like that. But when you switch to writers, you're actually gonna see writers. Now this is not exactly what we expect. And the problem here is that whenever you have several definitions of routes, so for instance, this one matches the slash path and this one matches the writers path, Notice that both of them start with a slash. So when you are on slash writers, the first one is being matched because it begins with the slash prefix. But the second one is also being matched because it exactly matches slash writers. 
So the one thing we could do is we could also add another attribute that's known as exact. And this will allow us to match the path exactly. So if I go back, let's see the difference. Right now we are on writers. If I switch to home, we're gonna see home. But then of course, when I click to the writers link, that's gonna bring us to slash writers and we're gonna see the writers section. 